Grade 8 math number 11.2D. Hi again. We're going to find missing angle measures in triangles. And if we know the measures of two angles in a triangle, we can use the triangle sum theorem to find the measures of the third angle. We've talked about the triangle sum theorem in the last few videos. If we only had the measure of one angle, it wouldn't be enough unless we put parallel lines above and below the triangle, like in video number 11.2b. We need to know how the two angles are related algebraically. It also depends on what type of triangle we're dealing with. If we're dealing with an equilateral triangle, we know all three angles are equal, and if they're 180 degrees from the triangle sum theorem, they're 180 divided by 3, aren't they? They're 60 degrees each. And a right triangle, we know one angle is a 90 degree angle, so if we have the knowledge that it's a right triangle and we have one other angle, then we can use that to find the third one. For an isosceles triangle, we know that the two base angles are the same and they're congruent. So if we have just one of those, we could find it, couldn't we? So let's take a look at this. This is a regular obtuse type of a triangle. This angle right here is obtuse, okay? It's bigger than 90 degrees. And if we need to find the missing angle measure and we have two of the measures, 100 degrees for angle D, and 55 degrees for angle F, we write the triangle sum theorem for this triangle. The measure of angle D plus the measure of angle E plus the measure of angle F is 180 degrees. This one plus this one plus this one will equal 180 degrees. We could substitute the given angle measures into the equation, into this equation, and measure of angle D is 100, F is 55, so we have 100 degrees plus the measure of angle E plus 55 degrees is 180. We solve the equation for the measure of angle E. Now I know some of you are saying, right, but I could just do 180 minus one, the 155 and not have to do it algebraically, just do it with quick subtraction. Well that's great and you could do that, but we need to show you how to do it algebraically, okay? So we solve the equation for the measure of angle E, so we combine the like terms, so 155 is 155 degrees plus the measure of angle E equals 180. And to continue algebraically, we subtract the 155 degrees from each side to isolate the measure of angle E to the one side, and we get that the measure of angle E is 25 degrees, okay? So we could have done it a quick way and just added them and subtracted, but it's better to show you how to do it this way so you formally know how to do it. All right, well, let's look at a right triangle. Well, we know one angle is 90 degrees, so if they give us that this is 60, and we see this, we know that's a 90 degree symbol, isn't it? That it's a right angle. So the triangle sum theorem as an equation is measure of angle A plus B plus C is 180. This one plus this one plus this one is going to be 180. So we have 60 degrees plus the measure of angle B, the one we don't know, and C is 90. Okay, that's going to equal 180. We add these two together, we combine like terms and get 150. And now 150 degrees plus the measure of angle B is going to equal 180 degrees. We subtract the 150 from both sides to isolate the measure of angle B, and 180 minus 150 is 30 degrees. Okay? Because remember that makes zero pairs. All right, let's look at an isosceles one. We have triangle PQR, and we know that this is 70 degrees. Well, if this is 70 degrees, and this is an isosceles triangle, we know that this is 70 degrees, right? Because the, the base angles are congruent. So when we write the triangle sum theorem as an equation, measure of angle P plus measure of angle Q plus measure of angle R equals 180, we could substitute the 70 for Q and the 70 for R, get 140. So the measure of angle P plus the, of the 140 degrees is 180 degrees, and we subtract the 140 degrees from each side, make this a zero pair, and it'll isolate the measure of angle P to one side, and 180 minus 140 is 40, so we know that the measure of angle P is 40 degrees, see? And like I said in the beginning of the video, if we're dealing with an equilateral or equal equiangular triangle, like LMN, we know all the angles are equal, they're all congruent. So all we have to do is divide this 180 degrees by three, and we know they're 60 degrees each. See that? I hope you understood. That wasn't too bad, was it? It's all common sense. And if you know the rules for the triangles, 
it really makes it easy. Just knowing that there's a 90 degree angle in a right triangle or that equilateral triangles all have the same internal measures or that an isosceles has congruent base measures, that'll help you, okay? Rules are great. They keep things in order and they make us understand what's going on, okay? We're going to continue on and I'll see you in 11.2e. Bye.